Because um, on, and this God said five years ago or some years ago that you're not my spouse, and now God is saying no, he's, he's putting it on God. He's not the one who's saying God is saying now that we should start again. So can God say it? M many Christians these days tend to use that word God said very loosely, very very loosely. Okay. Sometimes when their mind is leading them to do something, mm. they go ahead to tell the second person. God said. And we need to be very careful, you know, about that. And that's why Angela is saying, if God said then, has God now changed his mind? So maybe what would have been better for him to, to say at that time? The way things are now, which is what would have been expected of a Christian. He was born again. She had not yet surrendered her life to Christ. What was expected, like Pastor uh, Bishop said earlier on, is let the relationship be cut off or not. Let it be suspended. Is what, what, what's the role of room models? Or pastors in picking a spouse. Like, what, what, where does your role end? Case in point, mm -hmm. this this um, pastor is forcing his view, regardless of, he's just saying, look, this man is a pastor, he's asking you out, marry him. That's all he wants to know. How should role models and pastors go about in leading their, their um, ships and their church members in picking a spouse? Sir? When Daniel told him about the girl he had years ago, I think the first thing is interview Daniel, call the girl, interview her, and then call both of them and talk with them. And your role there is not to um, not to not to decree a thing and and expect uh, establish. You know, you counsel them and know if they are actually compatible with each other. But how do you disciple? How do you mentor? Like what is so much? There was so much hate and so much spite in his voice, ma. Okay, I think the the man in question there, perhaps he was a bit too harsh against the girl. Okay, uh, because if you're also trying to if you hope to win her to Christ later, that shouldn't have been the attitude. Mm -hmm. All right, and I quite agree with the girl when she said I wasn't talking to you. <laughs> all right, so he would have faced Daniel. Yeah. Um, okay, next question I want to ask is what, what, what's the role of role models or pastors in picking a spouse? Like what, what, where does your role end? Case in point, mm -hmm. this, this um, pastor is forcing his view regardless of He's just saying, look, this man is a pastor, he's asking you out, marry him, that's all he wants to know. How should role models and pastors go about in leading their, their um, ships and their church members in picking a spouse? Sir? The, the, the role the Pastor Daniel's father in the Lord played in trying to as if uh, force a girl kind of to go ahead with the relationship was in right. In the first place, <coughs> when Daniel told him about the girl he had years ago, I think the first thing is interview Daniel, call the girl, interview her, and then call both of them and talk with them. And your role there is not to um, not to not to decree a thing. And as and as especially as established, <laughs> you know, you counsel them. And know if they are actually compatible with each other to get married. Now there are four things you must look at in this briefly. One, are both of them Christians? Two, do they have affection for each other? Three, how compatible are they? Four, do 
will they have the peace of God in their heart concerning this relationship? If this four are complete, then one could say you're on your way to having a very blessed relationship. But to say he's a pastor, you must marry him because he said God said, mm -hmm. it's wrong. Mm -hmm. Absolutely wrong. A role model or a mentor doesn't actually have the right to choose a wife or a husband for anybody. The decision that is final lies on the person involved who can only guide, we advise, we counsel. You know, and then if you're a role model or a, or a counselor, you must have a lifestyle to portray for others to see. You know, somebody came to me one day and said he had a problem with his wife. And I, you know, he went to a, uh, someone he could call a role model to record the matter to and uh, he got there, he made him up with his wife. <laughs> so he just turned they went to. <laughs> and then went to home. He now came to me. So I said, now that you came to me, if you have made him with my wife also, what would we have done? <laughs> In other words, role models are not perfect. Mm -hmm. They are also human. So even people who are seeking for their counsel should know that they need a mature mind to take decisions as far as marriage is concerned. That's why we say that marriage is not for boys, it's for men, mature minds. For this cause, shall a man leave his father and mother, not a boy leaving his father and mother. Mm -hmm. You know, so role models have a, a, lot, a lot of roles to play in the lives of those who are seeking counsel for marriage. Thank you. Okay, Can I just chip in something yes, that? I'm talking still on role models now. And people as role models need to know, just like you said, you don't enforce and you don't blackmail. Mm. Now, if you look at this particular story, um, Angela, okay, he was the one sponsoring her album and it was her bishop, okay, as the case may be. Sometimes, as role models, we need to <coughs> remove our person, attachment. our attachment. So let it not be like, oh, she can't tell me no. Okay. Don't worry, I'll work on it. It's okay for your mentee to tell you no. Uh -huh, you know, I'll work on it. I know she can't tell me no. It's a role model shouldn't behave like that. I want to tell you no. I you should so respect. Idiot. If I tell you no, you should respect exactly. it. Exactly. Anything outside of that will be manipulation and witchcraft. <laughs> Intimidation. Intimidation. I, it's manipulation. So, yes, you might have helped me in so many ways. But I still have a right to make my own decisions. decisions. So you don't enforce your decision on me simply because you feel I owe you. Yeah. So that's what I say there. And role models need to do that. Whatever you are doing for a person, for another person, remove yourself you know, from it. When you remove yourself from it, then it doesn't now mean that, oh, oh, don't worry, I can handle it. Yeah. Okay. Once I talk to her, once I talk to him, he will agree. That's manipulation, and it's not. Right. It is. Well, on the issue of, 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 of on um, picking a spouse, you know, we have a lot of senior, you know, people that are like senior ministers mm -hmm. say, God showed me that this is my wife. I was going to meet her on this day. She's going to be wearing this. Net. Like they had specifics about their spouses, and he has made a lot of persons, you know, wait, are waiting for that specific too. So is that does God have to say this is your wife before it's your wife? Are there other ways to go around it? Do I have to know the shoe you wear? <laughs> the way it's still to be looking that day, you know, <laughs> stuff like that. Bishop, sir? You see, God deals with individuals, not groups. Okay. The way he deals with me may be different from the way he deals with my sister here. You know, so that God dealt with me in a particular pattern doesn't mean that he will do the same for her. For those who give testimonies about their specifics and all that, God said I should do this, she will be like this, she will be like that. For me, God did not talk to me or show me what my life would look my wife would look like. I've always desired a calm minded person, not a talker, intelligent, someone that would talk and others will listen. I've always dreamed the back of my bed. When I say dream now, desired. And I looked out for her. I knew that when I see her I will know. Because I had a standard. I needed a Christian. I didn't want a pastor. I'm a pastor. I wanted a wife that would take care of me. 
take care of our kids because I knew I, would, I was going to be a busy person later in life, which has come to pass by the grace of God. So when I saw her, I just was the one. And that was it. Ma, did you did you see your husband's picture? You no, know, you're very you're very spiritual woman. You're fast, no. <laughs> How did you go? You know, you know one of the things I tell people: <clears throat> the fact that you saw exact specifications does is not a foundation for a good man. Mm. Now, Mr. Still back so it is possible for God. I'm not saying God didn't say to tell you. Oh, she will be wearing a red dress. You will meet her social place. She will look like this. She will look like that. And I'm not doubting that at all. It is possible for God to Very say possible. that. Very possible. Like he said, God deals with individuals. But the fact that God told you like that is not a recipe for a successful oh marriage. Gosh, yeah. It's not a guarantee at all. So we need to remove that, you know, from it. You know, there's this young, one of my friends who's a reverend. He's not young anymore now. He's a reverend. He's a <laughs> Assemblies of God Church. He said when he went to Bible school, on their first night, they would gather all of them together. How did you receive your call to become a pastor? Mm -hmm. That's like a kind of welcome service yeah. to New Orleans. And they all lined up. Oh, I saw this vision. I saw this. Everybody gave theirs. And then there was this young man among them. I don't forget that story. It touched me so much. And when he got to his turn, he said, God did not speak to me. I didn't dream. I didn't have any vision at all. But while I was growing up, there was this pastor. I liked the way he lived his Christian life. And from observing him as a child, I made up my mind that when I grow up, I want to follow in his footsteps. That is why I'm here. For me, that's more real. That's more real. So what I'm saying is this. The fact that you got exact specifications, it's not a recipe for success because what we're all looking for in marriage is a successful marriage at the end of the yeah, day. Yeah. However, God refuses the person. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's the success of the marriage that is important here. Yeah. Yeah. So let each person allow God to lead him. The way God has been leading you. My husband will say, if in all your years God has never told you anything, all of a sudden, then all of a sudden is when you want to marry that God now begins to speak. You need to check it. <laughs> check the voice. <laughs> check it. Okay. Um, was was um, Daniel's approach, Pastor Daniel's approach, was it right? I will start from um, Dr. CJ, you know, she will come from the woman perspective. Was it right? Like the way it just went for me, I, let me just keep on this with that. Just before you answer the question, I'll go on a short break and we'll be right back. Please don't go. Daniel's approach was it right? I will start from um, Dr. CJ. You know, she will come from the woman perspective. Was it right? Like the way it just went for me. I, let me just keep on explaining. I would have his head. But do you think he was right? You know, knowing that they, they had not seen for ten years and they, they start to see. You don't even. You didn't even ask her. Okay, let's work on this. It's just they just became cordial friends. They're talking, they're visiting, and then pop, pop the question. So do you think he had the right approach? Uh, maybe not. Incidentally, it was a drama. So we don't know for how long that cordial relationship had existed before he finally popped up to the question. It was a drama, so we don't know for how long. But um, I don't even think it was the issue of how long the relationship had been. What Angela was happening on was that you once told me I was not the one. And now you are telling me that God is now saying I'm the one. I think that was what she was happening yeah, on. Not necessarily the approach. The approach. I think that was the issue she had problems with. So when it comes to approach, like I said, I don't know how long they have been going, had this cordial relationship after they are reuniting over after a decade. Yes. All right. So it may not necessarily be the approach. It is what he said God said before and what he's now saying God is saying. Okay. I think that was the issue. Okay. In addition, please. 
if Daniel had not said, God said, the first time, the first time <laughs> now that they met after you know, 10 years, you know, they say, when you treat a woman, she will be, she will pray for you to open your mouth and speak. Talk to me, Bishop. <laughs> There's what Daniel would treat her. That call that relationship and all that. She is the one that will be, oh God, open his mouth. <laughs> yeah. Let him speak to me now. But you see, the God said became a barrier. A, barrier, yeah. a foundational mistake, which many of us make many times. So we just learn a lesson from that. Okay. Okay, then I, I, I suspect it's, for some people it could be that she's, she's still hot, you know, uh, I can imagine how she really loved him 10 years ago, I can imagine how hot she is and now she's saying, no, it's either payback or, 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 or whatever. Now, for herself, how do, how do you think she can heal? Because you know some persons carry hearts that they don't know they have. Until something sparks it or like, so I was still pain that this person, I thought I'd forgiven, I thought I'd you know, let go. So how do you, how, how do you think she should start a healing process? For herself, even if she gets to marry somebody else. Daniel could still have helped her. Okay. You know, even with the way she reacted, Daniel could still have succeeded in marrying her if he removes his ego. Mm -hmm. I said, I'm sorry, I am sure I didn't know what I heard. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I said, God said that maybe I didn't hear well. I'm sorry. If the ego, ego thing is dropped, What's her name? Angela. She, Angela would still have listened to him, maybe. But assuming Daniel didn't marry her anymore and she was on her own, how would she heal? Number one, she needs to just let go and move on. In life, you don't take things too seriously. Honestly, there are things in life you don't take too seriously because if you do, you will hurt all, all through your lifetime. And it's unnecessary. Life is too brief to be in a state of hurt for too long, long yes. perpetually. So she needs to let go, forgive Daniel, forgive herself, and then move on, hoping for a better future, knowing that God owes her life and not whoever is saying God said. Yes. Mm -hmm. Perhaps that is where the hard bishop would have come in. Come in. Mm -hmm. All right. Rather than come with the approach of Oh, I'm your bishop, your uh, benefactor, and all that. If he had called her to say, well, like he said earlier, talk to them privately, and then if there is need, maybe talk to them together. We would have understood what had been, and then maybe the counsel now will be one a healing process, yeah. and then secondly, why don't you go and pray? Okay. And then okay, subject okay. it to the four tests. He talked about yeah. earlier on. Why don't you go and pray? Okay? If you had peace with it, she also needs to remove her person and remove the aspect of trying to be vindictive. Yes. yes. Okay? So if you now approach it now with a clean mind and then go seek the Lord's face and then let the Lord lead you, you know, as it is. And if, and I'm sure that if she had gone that way and she now come back to say, oh, Whichever the case may be, okay, I'm sorry, the Lord is not leading me to you and all that. That perhaps would have been better, okay? okay. Like Finally, five person going to ask. I'm sorry, please. Okay. If, if, for example, uh, Angela, maybe you are there, you are listening to us, and you, there is such a situation, the first step you take is know Jesus, because he's a healer. He can heal your heart, he can heal your mind, he can heal you psychologically, and... That's the beginning of anything that takes place in any man's life. When you, like she said, pray, hand over to God, I'm telling you, something good will happen and you will be happier later. The past is gone and the new has come. God help you. Well, I was going to, that was the final question I was going to ask and you already answered it. Oh, so I think it's your turn. What, how do you advise the parties to go about it? Um, what do you think they should do, like each of the parties, and how, how do they go about it? Okay, I think I've already mentioned a bit of that. But yeah, there was a flashback, what, just looking at the drama that I remembered, and that was this issue of uh, Angela first pretending to be a Christian. Yes. Because he so desperately wanted Daniel, yes. and since that was a condition he gave, she didn't mind. She, didn't mind. she faked being born again mm. because she had an ulterior motive. 
And then the moment Daniel now said, I don't think so, she dropped the Christianity right there. <laughs> and then I went back to her former lifestyle, you know. As a kind of parting was, that's why I want to say that if you were in a relationship before as an unbeliever, and then one of you gives his life to Christ. It's not by pressurizing the person, because this time around it was Angela that was pressurizing him. Yeah. Sometimes it's even the person that is born again that believer, feels yes. that I don't want to let this person go. go. Okay? There's got to be a clean break. If it is God's will, it will work it out together. And for the people towards the end of the story, like I said, what they both needed is give it time. Angela needed to give it time. And like I said, with a clean mind, why don't you just go and seek the Lord's face? What is the Lord saying now? No. The situation then is not the same as the situation now. So as at now, what, what is the Lord saying? And if it passes all those four tests, it's born again, we're compatible, I'm at peace, you know, and all that. Okay. Then we can go ahead. Okay. Thank you very much. Well, before we let you go, I'm just going to ask a question on one of the best decisions you've ever made in your life. Apart from giving your life to Christ and getting married, <laughs> those two out of them, I'm, I'm sure you, you are quite uh, mature in age, and um, you made a lot of good decisions yeah. and some bad decisions. So one of, one of these days we'll ask for the bad decisions. But for today, <laughs> what's one of the best decisions you made? You said apart from getting you married. And getting married. Christ, yes. Don't say those two. I'm happy, and I'm happier every day for obeying God and doing His work. I don't know what else would have given me this fulfillment and joy that I have and exposure around the world. So I'm happy serving God. Okay, you follow the purpose that God will have you exactly. for. Okay. I'll just open a particular incident. Uh, I met a child last year, very intelligent but was sent out of school because he couldn't pay his school fees. And somehow something official took me to the school. We were organizing something for one of my professional bodies. And I got there, oh, so where is this child? Oh, he's gone to the mechanic workshop. He's learning how to repair mm -hmm. generators. Why? Um, we have given him leverage for three terms. Oh. The father couldn't pay. And since the school is a private school, we can't continue to keep him since he's one of our best students. Well, mm. after finishing what I went there to discuss, I said, okay, take me to that workshop. I want to see that child. We got there, we couldn't maintain. But the summary of the story was that I paid the fees, got him a road to do his work, okay? He's written the work. He has passed very well. When the story came to my mind now is that two days ago, I was praying in the morning, and he called and said, Mommy, pray for me. I'm going to write my post UNT wow. today. And I just prayed with him and said, the Lord go with you and cause you to excel. I like mentoring young people a lot. And when such kind of situations come up, I try to see what I can do. One of them is graduating this year, another person with the first wow. class, petroleum engineering. That's so good. those things give me joy. So when I make those kind of decisions, they make me fulfilled and they give me joy. And I'm sure it gives a father pleasure too. <laughs> as much as we would like both of you to still stay, because I really enjoyed this, we'll have to let you go. Thank you so much, sir, for coming. Thank, thank you pleasure. so much, Ma, for coming. And uh, thank you for watching. I hope you start making right decisions. Don't forget, there's never a wrong time to make a right decision. So make it anyway. Thank you to see again. This is today.